But yeah, because yeah, on paper I agree with you, because it is, uh, again, very powerful lane combos, very powerful synergy later down the line as well. Like, you think about the Shadow Shaman together with the Grimstroke, that alone just gives you double Hex, double Shackles, double, you know, double AoE, Ether Shock even, if you want. That is, there's a lot of synergy from that alone. Not to mention the AoE Burst Strike from the Sand King, which is really good against Meepos, incidentally. Um, but yeah, it's still a Meepo. I mean, that's the kind of hero that can sometimes catch you off guard with just how fast he farms, with how far ahead he can get very early doing? on. Still the Monkey King was a very high skill cap. There are also quite a few stuns and a little bit of burst potential at least, if they get off to a good start in these lanes. I don't know what but, everyone's worried about. Well, I'm just gonna have to wait and see whether they can do that or not. Game number one of a best of two series, or two game series, whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. The big lines on so. the Dire, and Team South on the Radiant. Yeah, and these lanes uh, already, this is exactly what Juggernaut wants, in my opinion. He wants to be leaning against the Slardar uh, with the uh, Grimstroke in his lane. I think Rostar should teleport down there after the lane starts, but you want to make sure that the Shen King is a decent start to his lane. You want to make sure he gets level 2 or 3 and doesn't get just harassed out by the Monkey King and kind of forced to move back out of the lane. Abaddon isn't the best at dealing with a hero like Sand King, just due to the fact that he's a melee hero. Uh, range 2 would be a lot better at just kind of pushing him back, back a little bit further, but they have to work with what they have right now. Again, there's not really that much synergy between Monkey King and Abaddon. They're both pretty solid heroes, but you want someone who can kind of lock down the enemies and take advantage of uh, Monkey King's kit. Oh. So when Banruin's secured now, it's actually taking a lot of damage here on this Monkey King. They've already used all of their spells. They're going to have another round coming up in a few seconds. What a dive on a Tau here, don't they? Oh, I'm not sure if that's the best idea. Burst Strike, though. That'll secure the first blood. And he has a soul, so he can just walk away. There we go. And, uh, well, it can at least cancel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that Abaddon was more so focused on getting those bounty runes, so he wasn't able to save his yeah. monkey cam. I'm not really sure that's worth giving it up for. You did force the salve out of the Sand King, so this lane is going to be a little bit easier. This game is a little bit weird like that, where dying first blood uh, to the enemies isn't always necessarily like an awful thing, because you forced all this regen yeah. out, you forced them to use mana, and you did pick up a bounty rune. It was a weird game. It's still two for two bounty runes, so in that sense, it's didn't really gain you anything extra. It's just yeah, the but they same might have lost. Uh, they might have lost. Uh, like you definitely could have saved that monkey king there, just probably spamming uh, Miss Coil onto him. Yeah. But decisions, decisions. Yeah. Well, he's certainly not having a fun time right now. Can't really approach the lane for the time being. Need to drag it back, Abaddon with the. Doing the deed here. Also, we really like what they did earlier. They plopped the sentry ward down all the way back near the tier 1 tower inside the trees, and they're just gonna keep it for when they need it. But until they do, until they figure out where their sentry ward is, they're not even giving the indication that they have one available to them, the counter one. Which is maybe a bit more mind games than strictly necessary, but why not? There's Abaddon. Oof. A bit of trouble here, Burst Strike can follow up with the extra right click damage from the Shadow Shaman. It should be enough in the end. Level 1 of Forest Shield will buy just enough space now. Yep. Shadow Shaman is forced to get back there. He could have probably brought down that Abaddon, but would have died in his own right there as well. That hero unfortunately doesn't have a whole lot of movement speed, so he is punished uh, quite a bit, even with the boots of speed on top of him. Yeah, 330 on the Shadow Shaman with boots versus uh, 228 on the Abaddon without boots. Yeah. Come on, Valve. <laughs> <laughs> That's not okay. Well, he's on a horse, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's that. Yep, well. How are these other gets... Other lanes? Uh, yeah. So, so, you're doing okay in the mid matchup. I mean, OD's obviously out farming the Meepo right now. Uh, that's probably going to happen until probably level 5 or 6 on the Meepo, where he can start farming the lane in the jungle simultaneously. But right now, he has the banish advantage on the Meepo. So, as long as uh, Team South just kind of keep pace with what they're doing and then start playing aggressive, they're going to take this game completely fine. They just can't give that Meepo the space that he wants. Yeah. Down bottom. Ooh, Nameless. Actually in a bit of trouble here. He's well over on Juggernaut, but he's not actually fast enough. The Shrek, another one of these. 349 movement speed just with the Windlace against Nobu's Juggernaut. Yeah. 
So there's absolutely no way he's going to get caught. Yeah. Oh. So far, so good, though. Jock kind of falling behind a little bit in terms of CS. So Slaughter really doing a number on him right now. Mm -hmm. You do want your Shadow Shaman down here to kind of push this Slaughter out of the lane, make it so he doesn't get anything out of the off lane. I feel like you're. Yeah, that's. Oh no. Yeah, yeah that's. Taking, where he's mid. Yeah, he went mid because he made a bit of a play on the OD, but it's done missed. So, uh, Burnout was always going to be fine there. And now he's heading back towards the top lane again. I don't know. He needs to go bottom. He uh, needs to get this guy the hell away from the juggernaut. He dropped super freaking low there. I was very worried for a second. Yeah, it's just the strength of the badge. If you, if you let him play around with that, it just does so much harassment damage. You can also always secure easy last hits. It's very hard to play. And yeah, he got the game ward going right now, but... Uh, it's not always going to have that, necessarily. Yeah, I mean, you're burning through tons of regen. You're not getting as much farm as the offlane Slardar, and you're losing, I guess, the safe lane up here as well. Monkey King is doing better than... Well, I guess he's about even with the Sand King, yeah. but you want your Juggernaut to be getting more farm. It's less about shutting this Monkey King down, because Monkey King is not going to survive any harass that you do to him in this lane anyway, because of the Abaddon Ooh. lane. Actually going to get the Sand King here. They did not expect this new sentry ward, I guess. I could do this all day. Either way, I mean, they must have seen it because it de warded their own sentry. So, yeah. A little bit unfortunate. Meanwhile, rule time though. Sloth. Got the one down bottom, but now he's gonna be run down. Will have to try and deny himself to some creeps, I guess. And. Oh my god, it's actually able to do it. Gets a last hit from the Ancients, so seems good. Meanwhile, Shadow Shaman gets two more. And Juggernaut got one, so 4 for 0. That seems pretty I'm damn good, unless Juggernaut is dying here. Does have to spin for the time being, Nameless still trying to run it down. Edict does go through it if he gets in range. Now the bash into the follow up. And what? Oh god, don't tell me he lives here. What? Oh no, they didn't commit oh hard enough. Oh my god, Stout Shield. No, stout Shield and stout 10 shield. armor. Stick. And stick, yeah. Oh, everything worked in his favor right there. <sighs> I was just talking to somebody about how I hate the extra armor that the towers give you now because it punishes <laughs> like overly defensive gameplay and you don't really get, have an easy time diving and all of that and one of the reasons that Juggernaut lived right there was because of that armor aura. Yeah. Tower. I mean, that, that right click from Nash, I mean it's 50 base damage but between Stout Shield and the armor it went down to like 10-50 damage or so. Yeah. So it missed a kill up in the top lane, unfortunately. That was the Shadow Shaman going down again. He decides to come back up here again. I really think he should just stay on top of the Juggernaut, move around with the Grimstroke, the two of them should find kills together. Oh, no. well, not sure what's going on here. They just get the initial kill now, also super low. But it does have stick charges to work with. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess mid lane is kind of. Uh, done its thing, you know, where Meepo's got enough levels to go jungle full-time, and then someone else can actually Dyer's pick up the experience there. That's kind of the way that you want to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's just what's going to happen when you're playing Meepo. You're not going to be able to lane against the OD, you're just going to head to the jungle, then eventually out-farm him, just from the fact that you have more heroes than he does. Yeah. Well, now he's still fighting, he's going to... Oh, no, he's going to get the soul kill, any. Maybe not just yet. Oh, no, get the last right-click off! Before the shackles, and now he's going to hunt down Jairi. Jerry, the Shadow Shaman. Uh, one more hit. Into another jump. If he wants to come in, and he does indeed. Maybe not. Yeah, he's a little bit afraid of getting shackled or turned into a chicken underneath the tower. I mean, the Shadow Shaman didn't have the mana for shock, and yeah. the chicken wouldn't have lasted that long, but he figures, uh, I don't know, kill on Shadow Shaman under the tower, his allies TP in. That's not really worth it for me. I'm just going to farm. Yeah. I think it's the right thing to do. Oh. So this top lane started off pretty nicely here for Sand King and the Shaman, but now it's kind of stopped. So Sand King is gonna let's get some extra back laning. He's almost got that uh, Veil of Discord finished by the looks of it. The Abba still has to be a bit careful here, especially if they don't have a sentry, but they plop one down. And Sand King does have a burst strike down to low ground this time, but hey, guess what? It's a Meepo interrupting him with the net, brings a few extra friends. 
Not the most common rotation that you see all the time, but certainly worthwhile for him. Yeah, that one was planned out. They saw exactly what that Sand King was going for as he walked towards that cliff and Meepo right away just walked down there. So he gets a little bit of extra farm under his belt. Mm -hmm. on the bottom You're on the bottom of the Well, it's almost like uh, they heard what you said. Bring the Shadow Shaman down and they win the lane, but it was a little bit late. Still get to come on Slaughter though. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what Slaughter wants to be doing. He has to be getting up close and take advantage of his Bastion passive to be able to get those hits off on the Juggernaut. And this hero combination of uh, Shadow Shop and Grimstroke Juggernaut, they just kill you automatically if you try and take advantage of that bash. So they could have played that one. Track now. There's the Banishment. Oh, nasty nah, TP's coming in, though. I'm not sure if you're going to still stick around now. I mean, there's the Lash still being bursted down despite the ill attempts. Now the net of one of the very, very deep. That's another imprisonment. Drop the hammer first. Before he dies, and now Nile even making rotation in Shadow Shaman, stunned up behind that Ugo's command. I'll make it a two for one yep. trade. Unfortunately, uh, there's a little bit of weird communication going on right there. I think OD thought, all right, we're gonna die here. We might as well try and take down the fight, maybe uh, bring down the Meepo as we go. But Shadow Shaman and Grimstroke immediately running away. Only person getting out of that one was Grimstroke. Juggernaut. Is he actually dead here? Oh my god, he's oh he's almost dead, but not quite. Now the Omni Slash with the shackles on the tower to turn things around. And his eyes are very big that he really wanted that kill. One last hit, again, not quite enough to spike the minus armor despite everything. A soldier's fortune. But yeah, it was a good play by him to be able to bait the enemy down and get that kill with the Omni Slash though. He's gonna catch up a little bit with that. He's still uh They'll be high on net worth as far as the Meepo and the Monkey King goes, but OD is the very top by a decent chunk. I'm not sure how I feel about the wards right here. I feel like they're going to be able to clean this weapon up fairly easily. If they rotate heroes. So maybe they should have gotten a couple more heroes down there into the bottom lane if they decided to commit the wards to the tower, because again, you want to be playing fairly quick against this. You want to. I guess take a lot of towers, limit the farming space that the Meepo has, be able to rotate into the jungle and the triangle up here on the dire side of the map. But so far right they now... haven't done it all. I mean, Meepo has just been constantly farming, same as the Monkey King really. He's been uh, kind of also spending a lot of time running around, picking up a few extra kills. Uh, more or less by himself in the top lane as well. So it's... Both of them are doing quite well right now, seeing so about a 5k mark. Oh, he's still just a little bit ahead. But a lot of that is in that Midas. It's going to take some time to pay off. Yep, and you don't really uh, get the time for it to pay off against a hero like Meepo. He's just going to out-farm you, that's what he does. Meepo and Alchemist are the two, like, uh, I guess, you give them an inch, they take a mile, heroes. Yep. I guess Anti-Mage is up there too, but not as much as Meepo and Alchemist. Meepo evacuates and okay. Yeah, just not anything you can do there. You get banished, you get uh, Barrow Strike, you're down. Which is one of the unfortunate parts of playing Meepo. I really don't think he's that strong these days. I mean, back when he had the 35% base magic resistance and he had a lot more stats and he got like double stats from the uh, power treads and whatnot on his uh, Meepo clones, he was a lot better. Oh, right, right. I'm not sure about this TP, but he's got some help coming through. What's not gonna matter? Oh, he just gets burst down now. Double silence. Not much else. He actually, there's a double nuke. But they're just tanking it. Another burst strike coming through. They might find a Shrek, but a couple of heals from Panda. Keep him safe for the time being. They're all just kind of staring each other down as they do find the nuke on the ABBA. But that is a, f a trade that you take, especially if you get Juggernaut up top as well. In exchange for the tower, but still. Yeah, unfortunately the catapult did finish off that tower before Meepo was uh, getting the last hit deny onto it. He just trying to finish that catapult off oh, man, first. Done yet. Okay, gonna keep track of him very easily and so much damage from the Slush Rack, which isn't even much of a core in this, in this game. But it's still doing so, so much for just a few levels. Yeah, down there in the bottom lane, that went a lot worse than it could have gone. Losing that OD there it was crucial. He would have killed all three heroes there and then gotten out with no losses, but OD, I think, jumped the gun a little bit. And he, he just down that straight into the middle the of them and the, uh, the team didn't initiate beforehand. It was, it was yeah. never gonna work. 
now he just self imprisoned up top for no reason. Or CS. Yeah, Ah, I wasn't even in range of CS. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know maybe, maybe his hotkeys are wrong or something. We'll just, we'll just blame for that, you know. Blame ping, blame hotkeys. Mm -hmm. It's not quite there just yet. But yeah, it's, uh, talk, to, talk about his Meepo, because he's gonna hit critical mass soon, right? He's uh, almost has the E Blade completed. Blink they get queued up afterwards, so that's where you sometimes see the. Oh, blink, poof, E Blade, bing, 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 everyone's dead. But yeah, he's but he's going to need those two items before he really wants to fight. Before that, he just kind of walks towards you really slowly and he's not as scary. And you can always save the allies with uh, Astral Imprisonment before that. Once he gets the Blink Dagger, it becomes a lot harder to be able to pull that off. If OD is able to get a Blink or a Force Staff along with uh, being able to Astral Imprison whoever he goes on, though, that can turn a fight around instantly. It can be very bad for the Meepo, though. Yeah. Well, in the meantime... One of his and the rest of his team smoked up. Don't know if the Monkey King kind of jumping behind them, but it looks like they do figure out what's happening here on the side of Team Self. And get the spin away. Hey, maybe they yep. can figure out uh, finish off the tier 2. It's very low from that earlier push. They could even just back to prop potentially if they wanted. Otherwise, they're not going to spend a lot of time down here. Yeah, this is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to try and backdoor it. They do have the damage. But they respond by trying to take that uh, tier 2 in the mid lane. They do have wards down. But I'm not sure they're going to be able to uh, defend this tower. I think if you're in position properly here, you can take this fight. But Sanking doesn't have his blink dagger. He actually backs off there. Backing off. Wards will do a bit of damage here, but then once again going to be farmed up. For the most part. Take that as yeah, successful play. I mean, backdoor to, to tier two, save your own. I was you did tower. lose a chunk of HP on that one, though. Once that tower goes down, it's become a lot harder to defend your jungle, though. And then the radiant team is going to be able to play a lot more aggressive. I think uh, if they played a little bit further up, they might have been able to take that fight because Monkey King jump jumped the gun a little bit there. I yeah. don't know though. Also got some somehow they got vision on him, so they got the imprisonment, oh the astral imprisonment up on the tree. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you always see, but hey. The uh, Grimstroke uh, Q provide vision in the area, I believe. Mm, yeah, that could make sense. Oh, by the way, right. I mean this... Abaddon. Just playing close to his allies right now. There's not a whole lot he's going to be able to do. Again, he wanted to play defensive. Radiant did let you have that one. They didn't necessarily have to, but they allowed uh, what would have been an aggressive lane for the Radiant team to not really go anywhere because you let the Abaddon counter that lane. So now he's just kind of walking around, though, and he's not able to provide a whole lot for his team. I mean, it's, it's a plight of the Abaddon, right? It's, we always see him in this position. It's, he's not going to do much more than that just because he doesn't have that farming, uti farming utility at all mm -hmm. um, but the thing is like he's still having an impact right he's still always there's always the potential for his clutch save the clutch combo breaker with your 40 shields no matter how late the game goes Meepo was thinking about going down here to farm this creep wave, but he throws out a scan to the jungle uh, just checking if any enemies are ready to jump him and he does catch the OD Right there on that scan, just the corner of it as he was farming that camp, so he ends up walking right away from that creep wave again. Yeah. But yeah, he is farming quite a bit faster than the OD that with the minus, awesome. and he's gonna have his blink dagger pretty soon, and that's lane. when uh into the hex, there's a lot of damage, but now it comes to initiation. Nail goes in with the Wookus command and turning this around nameless. Now it's gonna get a kill or two of his own, perhaps he a defense imprisonment comes through, soulbind, double silence, and Okay, the Shanking is actually still alive. They couldn't get the follow-up damage in. It's just the one here dead for now, but they don't really want to leave. But maybe they just want to stall out. Meepo goes in, ready with the fresh blink. He should not expect this. But still a bunch of heroes ready to go, including the Burrow Strike Count Initiation, which works against more than one Meepo, of course. But Coming in from the side unseen here, it is nighttime. There's no angle here for Dyer to take. A swift current. 
Yeah, so they decide not to take that fight. I mean, it's a little bit difficult right now before the Sand King gets his Blink Dagger as well, but again, that's the timing that Meepo does have his Blink Dagger. Next, is going to be going for Sheep, but he's roaming right now. He's looking for kills. In fact, he's going to get out of here, but he's not going to be able to. Bash! The Bash was already charged up. The Omni Slash, well, they have plenty of units to tank that up. Kuka Hook is uh, dead sooner or later. Juma takes that with the E Blade Burst. That's some damage in case we didn't know. Yep, Slaughter was ready for that one. He had the three uh, three chargers on Bash the Deep ready to go. So yep. as soon as that uh, Juggernaut was trying to spin TP, boom. Snakes him right back in. A lot of foresight by him to be able to do that. Yeah. It's a uh, it's very small thing, very easy thing, but very important as well. The Hex comes in the on Slaughter though with the Shackles and a bit of back and forth. Once again, the Abbot has done this around, but now that's not really available for the Shrag. Looks like he'll be going down sooner or later, maybe not. Now the Mist Call keeps him alive. Slaw also very low indeed, like back and forth, but OD. First one to fall as Meepo goes in, but now the Hex on one. We don't want to do this here. Castana with another double crush here after the hit. No more Sanking, no more Shadow Shaman. And they were a little bit indecisive much. there. Yeah, and one of the awful things about that right there is you never end up getting Epicenter off, and whenever the, the Meepo throws the net on you, you can't use Burrow Strike anymore because that's a movement ability. Yeah. And you get when you get rooted with the net, you don't get to move. Oh. So them not being able to get that initiation off on their terms really ruins their team fight for Team South. It's also exactly the kind of game that you love to be playing as a slaughter. You have very low cooldown spells, you have high mobilities, you kind of want to weave in and out of the fight. Find a bash there, tank a few spells, get saved, do, do it all over again and again and again. And this kind of stuff is very hard to deal with because it's... the. In these kind of fights, it tends to get very chaotic, so it's much, much harder to anticipate the movements of these kind of thing, uh, these kind of heroes. Mm. Yeah, and just like that, you're on the back foot now in Deep South. There we go again. Oh, well, and this is what you were talking about earlier in the draft, right? I mean, the rules of Dota don't necessarily apply. This is a draft that we didn't really believe in. It shouldn't really make that much of an impact, but now they're 20 minutes in, AK ahead, the one pretty much lanes on it, got the farm. Now they're getting kills after kills, because Meepo's online. And not just him. You have the initiation from the slaughter, you have a secondary core on the Monkey King, who is a fresh PKB now, you have a ridiculous amount of push, you have to save from the ABBA. This is a huge timing win though, that they're just capitalizing on perfectly. Yep, unfortunately for them. Sand King is going to be able to buy his Blink Dagger here if he sells this Quelling Blade. They are going to be able to take a fight before they get this Rax here. And they need to realize this before they overcommit. Except to now, oh my god, crushed oh, out! He didn't even get it! Slada again, the big hammer being dropped, so Yuma will lose the Aegis. But now, for a second time, they'd have to fight through the Wookiee's command. Not sure if they really want to do that. Burn Strike goes in. A follow up here, the Omnis Slash bouncing through a bunch of, uh, against a couple of these Meepos, but not enough damage. And this crush forward on the Shadow Shaman so slowly having to make the retreat. A lot of damage, starting to stack up now. And no name. First one to fall on the Slada, and there Ross still in there with a the BKB. And, well, he's gonna need some help if he wants to get out. Panda might have to sacrifice himself. This is Ah, oh, no, he can't. He gets nuked down without the ultimate. Nail jumped up. There's a chicken on a tree in F. Can't say I've seen that one before. But, uh, he's gonna get away from this. Nah, I'm sure he's not fine. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Holding on to the Quelling Blade. Stupidity. Want to cut it down. Yeah, he held on to the Quelling Blade instead of getting rid of it. I was wrong. You were right. Yeah, Quelling Blade. Actually, good. why would he do that? He opted to not get the Blink Dagger and sell his Quelling Blade there and not get the ultimate Burrow Strike off because of it. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't know why they decided to play that that way. That is weird. I also don't know... Oh yeah, he bought back too and got he some money back. He did buy back, yeah. yeah. But he, was he would have had close. the money for the yeah. Blink Dagger upon respawn if he sold that Quelling Blade. Then he yeah. would have gotten the epicenter off onto multiple heroes. I feel like that would have been the play there. Well, here's it now. They do hold. They still lose the tier 3 though. Opening up shrines is pretty important. However... They were able to hold that, like you said, but you should have backed off a little bit sooner than that. You still did get a 
you get got something decent out of your timing window on the Meepo, but this game starts to get a lot harder if you're not able to take a set of racks uh, before that or win the game right there, because yeah. that is essentially Meepo's like strongest point, is when you just overwhelm the enemies like that. You kill yeah. people like one after another, caught them out of position. So if Team South plays Disciplined Dota from here on out, then I don't Radiant think that uh, Big Lions are going to be able to win this game. Especially later the game goes, it gets so much easier to deal with the Meepo. Um, in a draft like this, you have so much AoE that can stack up. You have this burst strike, that alone is just uh, potentially very devastating. And you really need that Aegis to have a second chance at life because you can't really rely on the PKB or anything. As OD, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had a coughing fit right there. Unfortunately, he did try to TP out immediately, but it <coughs> wasn't enough. He will be back up before the enemies can uh, move towards his base to be able to take that, but being able to take this shrine will open up the next Roshan, which makes your lives easier, but it is a while before the next Roshan even may appear. So, you have time to build yourself up right now on Team South. Unless the big lines want to make some big plays, I mean, they... Just finish up that sex as well. They're just gonna blink in, get a free kill on Jug. And hey, guess what? Right in from the exposed racks. Ages you can't be mages or something. I don't need that. He's gonna get the kills. You know that your OD is dead. This is exactly the kind of time that they want to be moving that far forward. You don't have any vision right up on the side of uh, Radiant, so why would you play that far out onto the creep wave? You played right in the Meepo's hands right there. Yeah. The moment you expose yourself, the moment he can, the moment he feels he can get away with a play like this, where he just blinks in with the rest of his team, gets a free kill, and then moves on from there without being punished. This is, yeah, as you said, playing right into the hands. This guy can kill anyone right now on your team. He's sitting at 19k net worth. 25 minutes into the game, he's level 20. And it's up top, long range shackles on the monkey king here with the hammer being dropped. The guns to be getting up a little bit late. Even with the crash from start and now No Name is also in a bit of trouble potentially. They wanted to chase him down, but they don't. They fear reprisal. It just goes to show how far behind they feel that they are right now as well. Uh, yeah, Shen they're Shaman. very afraid of this Meepo. Uh, and again, they need to be able to get the jump on him, but without that much control of the map right now, without any vision up, they're not going to have any. Just going in, burst strike on a single hero, that's the lash. And now the Jackals turn things around, Abba with the old. And maybe cast a few more spell bows, but No Name is dead. Hammer is dead as well. That's good healing work. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess that's one way to initiate, right? Just walk in. Just walk in. I mean, that was smart there, though. They cut their losses. They realized, okay, we can lose these heroes. As long as our top net worth hero, our 20k net worth Meepo, doesn't go down, then we're not in that bad of a shape. Yeah. This guy has all the power right now. And what are they really going to get from this? Like, they've already taken the tier 2 in the top lane. Yeah. So, even though you, you're you trying to claw your way back into this game here, you're not getting that much out of those kills. A very tiny dip in the net worth here, about a 1k gold swing. In their favor. Mm -hmm. but that can go as fast as it came to you. Yep. Considering the other hero farming is a Meepo, it's gonna disappear right away. Yeah. Because <coughs> Meepo can be in position and he can be farming at the same time. Yeah. He did farm himself up that Scotty very relatively recently, and now Juggernaut Link X follow up, couple right clicks, even Wooku's commanders, they also catch! Jerry. Jerry? Yeah. Double kill. Oh, yep. Jerry. And you're going to lose a set of racks here. Yeah, it seems more than likely here. Without Sinking buyback on the Juggernaut, your OD back. needs to be able to sit behind your Juggernaut if you're going towards Radiant a creep wave like that to be able to save him. Yeah. With Radiant the astral imprisonment. Oh. Go goes in. Look at this damage to towers as well. Jump forward. It's like missing Blink Hex though, that does not miss. First strike, buy some spade for the follow-up stun is there. Goodbye, OD. No buyback there either, and Sanking doesn't even make it back home. Good so right in front of the fountain, he gets nuked to pieces. Yeah, and that's gotta be yeah, this it. it. This gotta be it. How are you doing? He says, well, not good is the answer. 
No buyback there on the OD. You can just head straight for tier fours right now, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Group stroke is gonna buy back. They can spam out this meeple a little bit, but if they want to end the game right now, I think that they can. You just jump on to the juggernaut and hacks him, take him out. He doesn't have buyback. They've shown that. I think they're a little bit scared. If he wants about... to play forward right now, he's not scared. He wants to go. He's sitting in front of the base here. His team doesn't believe in him though. Yeah, they don't believe. Maybe they're afraid about this uh, sinking buyback into epicenter combo or whatnot. Um. Of course. Well, and there's also new Roshan, so... So why you not? You can get a Shadow Blade, you can get the Aegis... Just imagine... Going in, in this, and then just nuking somebody down like that. Just as the icing on the cake, you know? I mean, the game's already pretty much won, unless they mess up super hard. Yeah, when you're this far ahead, you have the Aegis, you have the Cheese, they're down two sets of Draxes. You've just made too many mistakes to critical times uh, when that Meepo was at, like, his absolute strongest who were making these mistakes. Yeah. And you can't do that. The Aegis up top should take care of the Tier 2 very quickly. Now, Panda, well, at least the one here that can go forward is now Blink, Crush, Extra Hexes. Try and slow this down. What? No, don't do that. Uh, uh, that was very dangerous. I think he was just asking for a big lines to initiate on him. Yeah, just hoping they would. Yeah, he says sorry, his team probably yelling at him for that one. <laughs> oh, Monkey King. Did you see that? Sanking was just cutting random trees. He's gonna find the real one. Would be so funny. Oh my god, oh, he did he it! it. <laughs> ah, the Mad Lad did it! Do they have enough damage though? I'm not sure they do. No, Mops Shadow the BKB Shaman with the Wookiee's command. Team coming in, couple of signs coming through, but look at the Grimstroke. He's gonna get annihilated any moment. There we go, next on the list is Sankey, who can burst strike out, and now Meepo. Says low, he does have the ages to work with here. Hunting down is all deep, but the episode of Burst Strike, that'll be the first life. Can make a play for the second one, it's gonna be hard here, especially with No Name still left to crush. We no, do still have all oh, God, that's on three you people follow. Double stun there, the hammer needs to be dropped on. It doesn't do anything. doing anything! The burst strike by some space, Meepo. Some of them are dropping kinda low, but now oh, they'll see E Blade burst. Goodbye, OD is set another time. As the entire team falls apart, Jerry. Jerry trying to TP out, but it's never gonna happen. A valiant effort, but just too little, too late. GG, well played. He's called. Oh no. It, it looked so good at the start of that fight when they caught out that uh, sand king, but 